Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are gonna talk about my trip to Ghana. I've been vlogging and filming for you guys, so don't worry, I've got you covered. But I wanted to know exactly what you guys wanted to see, and a lot of you actually voted on Instagram that you wanted to see this video first, so I decided to deliver. Germany on the 25th of February. So for the tickets, I actually paid 699, so let's say 700 euros roughly for a return ticket. I bought mine through a travel agency. I'm super old school called Seco, and they probably deal with a lot of like African destination. And so if you guys want to know more, I'm just going to leave their link down in the description box below. There's no direct flights to Ghana. I feel like a lot of people might or must know this because uh, especially when you're flying from Germany, you have to fly with transit, basically. I flew with Brussels Airlines, but from Frankfurt to Brussels, it was with Lufthansa. And then from Brussels to Accra, was with Brussels Airlines. <music> Thankfully, I didn't have any delay whatsoever, so it was good. I actually arrived basically before the estimated time of arrival, which was great. I mean, it never normally it never happens. So I think that if you are not Ghanaian or don't have a Ghanaian passport, you have to like apply for a visa before. However, there is an option where you can get visa on arrival. And when I reached Ghana, I was able to like get the visa on arrival. It cost me a total of 140 euros for 60 days. I don't know how much it would cost or would have cost me if I did that prior to my travel. So I can't really talk about that. But I feel like it's really important to know that Ghana has two seasons. So um, we have this like dry season and the raining season. Raining season is between like May to July, June. June, July, August, right? That's raining season. So May, June, July, August, sometimes September. And then uh, dry season starts late November to, I would say mid-February. So when I was going to Ghana, it was actually the end of like the uh, dry season, but you still felt like it was definitely hot. When I was leaving Ghana, I felt like it was definitely like a little cooler because it was starting to rain. When it comes to the best time to travel to Ghana, I would definitely say from February to May because that was kind of like the time slot I traveled to Ghana. April can be a little expensive due to Easter and Easter is no joke in Ghana. Listen, people go wild, but if you want to like have maybe party nights and stuff like that, then definitely December and January is for you. If you're like me and you like nature and a little, you know, reserved, I would definitely recommend like February, March and April. And eventually, if you want to like see the rainy season and see like everything flourish, I would definitely recommend like the rainy season. I feel like everything in between, you're going to have like any weather. I think in February and the beginning of March was definitely hotter because it's kind of close to the dry season. But like mid-March to like the end in and beginning of April, you definitely felt like a little like the weather was just a little like cooler. So I guess it's because like the rainy season was about to start. <music> Ghana, we have the cities. Cities is basically what we use. You probably would see people like use euros maybe at the airports or like at the visa of arrival uh, offices um, and mostly dollars, especially in the tourism scene. Um, other than that, I think that it's really important to know the exchange rate, which is between 10 and 13 uh, Ghana cities. Every Forex Bureau has a different like rate they're going to give you. A lot of people wanted to know, what if you don't have a family member in Ghana? How am I supposed to move around? <laughs> well, we have buses, we have taxis, we have Ubers, we have um, boats, we have like basically a lot of like services. So do not be scared. We have like shadow buses and stuff like that. When it comes to buses, there are like long distance buses within Ghana. So it's called the VIP. And I think there's another, um, I don't know how to call it, like a different category of that. That is called VVIP. We have an STC, which is like West Africa International. If I say something wrong, I'm definitely going to put it on the screen again because I'm not really sure how far this particular um, bus or transportation company um, goes. I know that when we were traveling through Ghana, I saw these buses quite often. So two different types of taxis in Ghana. You have like the loaded taxi and then like the drop off taxi, which is like the like original type of taxis. Then they have a bus, which is called the Trotro, which is also kind of like a loaded system so it's basically all over the place in like in Ghana you can always hop on and they just kind of drop you the fare is way cheaper and it's cheaper than a taxi or uber or bolt 
for me, first of all, I didn't have to really think about accommodation because I have family members in Ghana. The first two weeks, as I said, I was kind of like, you know, pampered. I didn't pay for anything. <laughs> Psych. But um, yeah, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth week, I was traveling. Basically, I was confronted by accommodation. There are a lot of accommodation, like accommodation services in Ghana. So we have hotels, motels, hostels. We have uh, Airbnbs. You can rent a house. You can rent an apartment. We do have couch surfing and like stay home and all that stuff. When I was traveling the, in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth week, I spent quite a lot of money on accommodation, but that was not really the highest expenditure. I think I spent between eighty to like two thousand Ghana cities for um, accommodation. And um, as I mentioned, guest houses are great. I mean, I I, I slept in a lot of guest houses. And I would definitely recommend it. Uh, if you're a Christian, for example, they do have a lot of like um, church guest houses, which are so affordable and so safe and very clean and super calm. It's important to know that Ghana can be expensive, especially Accra. If you go out of Accra, it's a little cheaper, but not so cheap, unless you're like somewhere in, you know, a remote place, then it's definitely different. Um, I would say that in my case, I was living with my family uh, for the like for the first two weeks and then the last week, and I kind of traveled to other places on my own, or let me say like without the family. I was paying a lot of things then on my own then, but you know I had my budget. But even after the trip, I still had some money left, so that was definitely good. But you can't really use my like situation on yours. If you're staying for like four weeks or maybe three, I would say without family, you should definitely have like 2,500 euros, even more, because you're gonna spend more money on like accommodation and like transport, etc. So that's pretty much everything I can say about that. There's a lot of things to do in Ghana, a lot. You cannot come there and say that you didn't have fun. Ghana is for everyone, it's for everyone. You can be a party, night owl person like you can go out every single night you're gonna find clubs food spots everything out there if you like more common nature just like me you're definitely gonna <laughs> you're not gonna get bored you're never gonna get bored if you like a mixture definitely cities there for you if you want to see more cultural sites of Ghana if you want to be more in the savannah safari area definitely like there's a lot to do in Ghana if you want to stay at the coast you have the west coast you have the east coast I travel to so many places I'm just gonna like list everything like on the screen and you know show you some pictures and you know give you some clips because I can't really like wrap my head around what I've seen. Doing this video I had to go through like everything once more and I was just really emotional. So
So yeah, it was a great time, 100%. I would say though that if you wanted to travel to Ghana, I would definitely recommend like my driver, 100%. He's a family friend. So if you ever want to go to Ghana and you're not sure who to trust, comment, like just text me. I'm I'm going to leave all his handle, his number, everything on the screen, even in the info section box below. His name is Uncle Ima. He is such a professional driver. He is so good at his work. He is like, he makes you feel so safe. We traveled through the night, through any sort of like thick forest, everything. He just made sure that I was safe. Like that was his priority. Is one of the most patient person ever. What really took a lot of money was definitely the fuel because I wasn't traveling, you know, with services or with tourist agencies. I kind of did everything on my own. I had a map and I followed the map. <laughs> you cannot tell me you went to Ghana and you could not find something to eat. Like food in Ghana is no joke. It's not a joke. You are going to eat. Look at my cheeks. Look at this. Look at this. I... Put on weight, okay? Uh, the food was food in. <laughs> it's so adjustable for every diet type, like whether you're vegetarian, vegan, pescetarian, flexitarian, you name it, like you are gonna find something. There's so many fruits and vegetables. Even if you were raw vegan, you're definitely, like you'll be the happiest person on earth. We have like the types of porridge. My favorite was Koko Hausa Koko from the north with buffer. We call that Dobe. But it's like the puff puff everyone knows. It's the same basically. A lot. We have been kung fufu, kenke, kokonte, abetsie. I am not a big like swallow fan. Like I don't really eat a lot of swallows. But my favorite swallow would definitely be omutsu, which is rice balls. I like it with palm nut soup, hundred percent. I like it with granite soup, hundred percent. I am not really big on meat and fish and stuff, but a little like salmon tail. I love watching it so much. It's one of my favorite. It's actually my favorite food. There's so much more. We have Gary Foto, Gary So Kiss, we have Ice King Kim, So Bolo, we have uh, Asana. Asana, it makes your body like fight off the heat, which is medicinal. I mean, it tastes good. Um, yeah, So Bolo is made out of like hibiscus blossoms, like soup, the bunabunu soup, and fruits. A lot of fruits. Like, I, a lot, a lot. My favorite will be Alugun to Gink. A lagoon to green. I love it. I don't really know the English word. I think it's sour something something sour pop. Overall, I feel like Ghana is definitely a place to be. It's a vibe. The food is great. The people are great. People really put a lot of emphasis on respect so that everyone in a community actually feels comfortable, which I definitely, definitely advocate for. I also feel like Ghanaians are so peaceful. Ghanaians are hardworking people. It's, it's packed with a lot of calories, a lot of stories, beautiful stories, hurtful stories, but in the mystery of it all, it's actually a very beautiful country. The fact that when you're a tourist, you have so many options to choose from, like you're not being limited to just one specific tourism like type, you can do so many things. There's a lot of places and areas that have not been discovered. So I wish to go back to Ghana 100% and discover like other areas. I definitely want to go to the north because a lot of people tend not to go to the north. It's very safe. It's a very safe country. Um, a lot of people travel on their own. Obviously, there are a lot of like security measures that you have to like implement when you're traveling but you don't have to like be super scared ghana has to change in fact i mean it has to change when dealing with fiscal policies i mean covid 19 really left a lot of like companies dry the government actually really did not help a lot of companies even like schools and like private schools and stuff people really have to dig really deep in their pockets i'm not really saying that people in ghana are poor but there's definitely the reality that some people don't have enough the distribution and the allocation of salaries is just and goods in general it's just like it doesn't make sense you know like the things are so expensive but you don't really get enough pay that is really hard so for me definitely like the government has to really come in and you know like implement some sort of like measures so yeah that's pretty much everything i hope you guys enjoyed this video a little recap and uh, i'll see you guys in my next video